right, I started recording. All right, yeah, good morning again, everyone. Um, so uh, the lecture slides that I'm going to cover today, images, cameras, displays, and human visual system, are like some background information, uh, which we will not actually be talking about. But we will not be focusing in the rest of the semester. So uh, let me also open the uh, chat. All right. Yeah, good morning again, everyone. Uh, so, uh, but uh, it's good to know we're going to talk about things like gamma correction, wha uh, how we perceive uh, brightness, uh, which is also uh, sometimes called luminance, uh, the brightness in the scene. It's uh, important uh, in the aspect that it's a connection between the uh, the values we provide in our images, uh, the pixel brightness values, how they are interpreted by the hardware, the display, and also uh, at the end how we perceive them uh, with our own eyes, because all these graphics uh, output are for humans' eyes to see. Uh, so uh, this today's top discussion is going to be uh, focusing around these issues and as I said it's not uh, going to be related to the algorithms that we're going to be covering the rest of semester but still related uh, in the sense that we will talk about uh, the output types. All right. Okay, so uh, so this is... Uh, so let's go ahead and start. And again, if you have any questions or parts you don't understand, or if you have any comments, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself to speak up or use the chat box uh, to ask your question or comment or share some links uh, with your uh, friends and I. All right. So, uh, so I'm going to go over the PDF slides. So some of the bullets are therefore grayed out. Uh, in the PPT probably it's not like this, but these are the same PDF slides that are shared with you on Opticlus uh, by uh, Ozoja. So uh, I will be covering uh, those. Okay, I will I will be going over the same uh, types. Um, yeah, some people have problems about uh, maybe about the recording or Cisco WebEx may have a problem about synchronizing voice and this. Uh, video. Uh, I hope it will not be a problem in the recording. If you watch it later, probably it may be a uh, result. Uh, okay, so uh, as I said, I already gave an introduction that we are, we, our goal is to generate images of virtual worlds. Uh, so today we are going to talk about what, how we how, how can we represent images. What are what are images? Uh, people are very familiar with them. I mean, everybody is very familiar with images in different image formats since we uh, share them uh, by using WhatsApp or uh, we send emails. We take uh, digital images with our cameras, smartphones. Uh, so uh, I, I assume. Everybody has some familiarity with at least, for example, how many megapixels uh, can your camera uh, take? Okay, I mean the 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 images your camera, the photographs your camera takes. So these are these properties. So megapixels is one thing that we use to indicate resolution, but there are other things as well. Uh, like whether uh, you're using a compression, you're reducing, how do you reduce the image size, especially when you're sending, uh, you may have had this conversation with your friends a lot, for example, uh, like, uh, please do not send the photographs to me by WhatsApp because it reduces the resolution. Can you also send an email or can you send the, share the photo you just uh, took with me by airdrop or some other ways so that I can have the original photograph in full resolution. So, uh, so the um, image resolution, uh, whether it's going to be compressed with a lossy compression or lossless compression, uh, if you're using very high-end digital cameras, there are different formats like the RAW format, so, uh, which may take uh, an image may take 50 megabytes, 100 megabytes of space. But if you're going to share uh, it across the network, you don't want to have such a large. Uh, size for a single image uh, and if you're just also if, since you're going to view it on your phone for later I and mean, if you're just using it for uh, just remembering a memory uh, 
human perception it will be that that lossy conversion and low resolution display will be sufficient for you to uh, view it later okay for human viewing it may be uh, that low resolution may be sufficient but if you're going to print that photograph on a big poster for example uh, that resolution may not be sufficient and you may need a higher resolution uh, image okay so uh, images and the displays we're going to talk about resolution and it's the megapixels is basically the the count of pixels so the term pixel uh, indicates that our image is discretized it's a discrete set of uh, small squares uh, that make up this large image uh, but in general uh, the definition of image and uh, images may be continuous uh, and there may be hardware which may be capable of displaying continuous images so these the decisions on how we are going to represent images it has a long history since the first television sets or I mean uh, I mean the digital photography uh, we can say uh, because uh, we, the photography at the at the end of the 19th century people were taking photographs uh, but uh, in terms of images we can also go to with, I mean before we had digital t TV sets uh, if you re re read the history about computers as well um, there was this text uh, Lumi machine, so uh, it, it was like a, the, one of the first computers, I mean, first automated uh, machines, mechanical, it was mechanical, it was, uh, there's nothing electronic about it, but it, they, I think in the early uh, 19th century, uh, some visionaries, they designed uh, machines uh, that can automatically uh, I think I, I, I have that. Let me uh, text text uh, portrait textile portrait uh, in in 1800s. Yeah, so these are like uh, textile mill stock photos, no, not textile mill, fabric ideas, textile in 19th century European textile pr production. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, this is also a side note, but uh, there were uh, photography and images, and it was, it was kind of a, a discrete image as well, uh, since we are putting those uh, different f pieces of fabric on top of each other. <clears throat> but yeah, an image uh, we are going to see. We are going to see in this course. We are going to see images that uh, come in digital format and in pixels in certain resolution. But in general, as I said, an image can be a continuous, continuous intensity distribution over a bounded two-dimensional region. So this two-dimensional region may not necessarily be a rectangle. Uh, but this is the most common image type we have with certain height and width. Uh, we define the rectangular region, which we call an image. And it's uh, when we say intensity distribution, uh, there will be uh, different intensity levels across this 2D field. Okay, so actually I can, I can also uh, use this one. I can use annotate to do annotation on this one but uh, whatever an image is it will be different colors of uh, for example uh, different objects in this image they will be they will just be providing uh, intensity distribution over this and it may be continuous uh, meaning that the domain the height and width can be uh, continuous values but uh, in the most general sense, uh, we are not, uh, in the most common image sense, we are not going to be uh, using uh, these uh, continuous images. Our image is going to be discretized and it will contain, each pixel is going to have a certain data type. So this is, this is an, when we think about an image, this is what it's going to come to our head, so to, my, to our mind. So we, it's going to have a certain width and certain height and the number of pixels in an image 
uh, is what we usually use as resolution. So when you say uh, one megapixel image, it means that it contains one million pixels. So a one megapixel uh, image, one million pixels, uh, it will be a multiplication of a certain uh, width and height. Okay, so whatever, uh, if you multiply two numbers, it gives uh, one million. Uh, those could be the height and width of your image. Okay. Uh, Sometimes we also indicate the resolution as a specific width and height. For example, uh, when I get a new image in, on GIMP, so when I say new, or actually it's written here at the uh, here at GIMP, you can see here the resolution uh, 1920 by uh, 1080. So it's uh, if you multiply these two numbers. Uh, it's going to be uh, around so, so 2,000 times 1,000 roughly. It's going to be 2 million roughly. So a 2 megapixel image, roughly 2 megapixel image could contain uh, this many pixels at the, in the width. So this is the first thing is the width and this is height. So 1,080 pixels height and 1920 pixels width uh, will indicate an image so but when, while you're resizing the image you're actually your screen has a different resolution you're always um, making resizing uh, re resi and when you're displaying you're always making uh, scaling rescaling changes between these different resolutions okay but yeah this is the most common uh, image that we are going to be using and in your first uh, the code you're going to write we're not going to uh, use extensive image generation libraries like there in C for example you can use libjpg libpng to generate images in jpeg png on different formats but we are going to be using an ascii format that we are going to uh, uh, and there are certain disadvantages like uh, large image sizes but what we will do is uh, we are not going to have you work, uh, learn these new uh, libraries for image handling uh, we will just be using a very simple image format in which we are going to indicate each pixel uh, pixels color values one by one uh, which you can open in uh, uh, an editor like Notepad++ or VI to see the actual values, integer values that are stored in these pixels. So yeah, the total number of pixels is called the, the resolution. So when you say one megapixel is one million pixels image. Uh, and, and the data we store at every pixel depends on what type of an image it is. It may be a grayscale image, a bitmap image, uh, but we are also most familiar with color images. And usually a color image requires three different channels for uh, three color channels. There are different ways to represent color information. And one of them is the RGB color space, red, green, blue. So each pixel is going to have a red, green, and blue component, and all the other all the colors will be a combination of these red, green, and blue. And uh, different display devices use different color spaces. There's, for example, another color space: hue, saturation, value, uh, HSV, uh, and there may there are conversion between different color spaces. But we will in this course we will be using the RGB color space: red, green, blue, and uh, a single byte, 8 bits, for per channel will be sufficient to have millions of colors. So, uh, with, uh, for example, uh, which will give you in three channels, it will give you 24 bits or 3 bytes. Uh, 2 to the 24, if you just take a look at what 2 to the 24, 2 to the 24, uh, it's 16 million. So you can get 16 million colors. Uh, by using three bytes per pixels, 16 million different colors. And we usually have, uh, for example, RGB. If uh, So all, all these red, green, blue 
components, they will have values between 0 to 255. They are unsigned. We will use unsigned bytes for them. 0 means no uh, luminance or intensity at that particular channel, uh, red channel. Uh, if you have 255, 255, 255 in all channels, it will indicate white color. If you combine all these three ch channels together and if they all have the same uh, amount of intensity, you get uh, gray scale, scales of uh, gray, and uh, the highest intensity gives you the white color. If it's all zero, 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 you get the black color, and you get a variation of different 16 million different colors you can have for every pixel. Okay, so that's a color image. So it's ranges. Uh, so these are all still uh, shown as the image, just as you can see, the image is nothing but this color distribution. Is, its domain is still real numbers, a rectangle, uh, a 2D uh, area uh, in the domain of real numbers. It means that it's not discretized. When we describe discretizes, it's probably from going to be uh, integer space. It will our pixels will have con uh, coordinates. Uh, we, which usually indicate the center of the pixel and they will be integer coordinates. So our image coordinate system will be composed of integers when we discretize them. Uh, this is what a color image is. A grayscale image, on the other hand, will since uh, I told you that if all those RGB channel values are equal to each other, we get gray values. It means that uh, if you just want grayscale image, the two other channels are redundant. You don't need them. Uh, you can have a single byte, uh, uh, 8 bits, for to indicate a grayscale image. And uh, at the lowest level, you can have a bitmap image by just using... Uh, uh, yes. Uh, what was that I? Oh, I is the image itself. Uh, I is ah, okay. the image. And the image, uh, we define the image as a mapping. As uh, yeah, as a mapping, mapping. from a two-dimensional domain to a range. Okay, so an image is like a function uh, here. Uh, we, this is like a function definition, right? So your image is a, will be a specific function that you're going to have, which will take as input to x, y coordinates, uh, which will be the co uh, coordinate of the pixel in that image space. And when we ask what is the color of this pixel, uh, the color of the pixel either may be a three-dimensional vector red, green, blue, or it may be a grayscale single intensity value. And in most general term, uh, this is a color uh, image. I mean, the, the color also may, if you, if you allow to use more information for color, not just a single byte per channel, you can still have three channels, red, green, blue, but if you allow those red, green, blue values to uh, have any real valued number, um, maybe may non-negative. Uh, negative values of color or intensity uh, does not make sense. Uh, we are just going to use positive intensity values. Uh, but uh, this is the most general sense. Uh, so here are some examples. Uh, if you just use black and white, you can get images like this. One bits per pixel. So this is what BPP means. A simple bitmap image. Uh, just the it's a map of bits, basically. That's why it's called bitmap. But uh, you may also... Uh, there is the bitmap format for uh, from Windows, uh, which uses... Uh, which is an image format uh, that you have, can have color images. images. Do not confuse the bitmap uh, as we uh, use it here with the format, bitmap image format, BMP. That's, the, that's, something, that's something different. So when I say, in, in the sense we use bitmap here, it's a map of single bits. And uh, you can get images uh, that look like this. Each pixel here is either, actually, since uh, you may actually argue with me that, oh, I can see some gray values here, right? I mean, uh, this doesn't look like a bitmap because look at part of the uh, roof here. There are obviously gray values which are either uh, which are not black or white. So, yeah, are, am I fooling you that this is a bitmap? The the reason that you see gray values is probably because of JPEG compression. Uh, during uh, this is a this is not a loss. Probably this image was selected from. Uh, 
some website which stored it as a JPEG image. If it's stored as a JPEG due to lossy uh, compression, uh, it uses some averaging of neighboring pixels to indicate pixel values. The, therefore, averaging uh, black and white values sometimes may give uh, gray values here. Now, let me show you uh, some another bitmap bitmap image. Yeah, like these puzzles you were doing uh, when you were, I mean, when you were a kid, or you may still be doing those. So these puzzles are examples of bitmap images. Uh, let's look at a large, larger resolution one. Mm, yeah, for example, this one. Oh, this is like a grayscale. Yeah, this one, black or white. Yeah, so this one really is a bitmap. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, we perceive certain parts of the image as gray uh, because of uh, the effect that all uh, putting black and white pixels uh, next to each other. Uh, but uh, if you look at closely to the pixels on this image, they are either black or uh, white. Okay, so this is an example uh, bitmap image. And in grayscale, uh, we have just uh, shades of gray here, uh, which uh, with a single byte. And this is, uh, I mean, six, with 16 million colors, you can have great detail in images. So usually, most of the time, these 24 bits per pixel is sufficient to have really nice high quality color images. Now, uh, so this is what an image is for, oh, for us in this course. It will be a rectangular. Uh, maybe, we, I mean, it may also be if you're having a different, for example, a dome display, uh, which is like spherical, that your image may not necessarily be a rectangle. Uh, but in most cases, if unless um, otherwise specified, an image will be a rectangular region like this with a certain width and height and every pixel will contain uh, one of these three values red, green and blue channel values in one byte, unsigned byte for every channel. Alright, so let's continue. Uh, yeah, this is the RGB color space. Uh, the white is indicated by uh, having um, 255, 255 for all channels. Black is the other corner of this cube uh, with uh, red. And uh, as you can see, the color transition uh, in, in real life, actually, uh, there is only one property of light that determines this color, right? It's wavelength, actually. Uh, photons are, uh, if you, the color of a photon, uh, the, the light rays, uh, the wavelength determines, but uh, in, on our eye, the human vision, we have different uh, cones for which are uh, specific, which can sense certain specific range wavelengths. And these are the R. In, in, in our human biology, actually, it's also like three different channels. Uh, cells that are photosensitive more to uh, the ones that are close to the red wavelength, blue wavelength, and somewhere in between the green uh, wavelength. So our brain combines those uh, signals coming from those photosensitive cells. So this three-channel uh, thing, which in physics you may see there is no... Uh, I mean, the modeling, this is a three-channel... Uh, may not be good in physics because there's only the one thing that is wavelength but it's actually the three channel thing is also coming from human biology as we have three different types of cells for uh, perceiving color and the way we store these uh, three values we can either uh, have for example for each pixel we may have uh, a, uh, a color object or a color class or a struct whatever however you're going to implement them but if you just store these three values for every pixel it's called interleaved another thing you can do is you can uh, treat this uh, color image as three separate panes of grayscale images for each different channel so uh, this in this case it's called planner uh, 
organization of an image and otherwise it's uh, called interleaved if all the color colors are together in the in one Hocam, pixel yes wouldn't uh, like a planner take more space uh it depends actually uh, it depends on i mean uh your if you're implementing it in c it may really not matter how you have your uh, whether it's a for example if it's a three by resolution array or resolution by three array so it doesn't matter where you put the three actually so it's really a way of uh, uh, it does. Uh, it, it would probably ma not matter in many cases, uh, but if you just wrap this around some other class or some other object, for example, it's, uh, it's it, it may it may take more space depending on how you implement it. Uh, but uh, we will again not concern ourselves with this, whether it's an interleaved or planar image. Just this is again a side note that you you should have uh, somewhere. It's I mean we're not going to. Ask. You don't need to memorize these like this, but uh, for example, the PPM images that we are going to have, they are going to be interleaved. We are going to have RGB values per pixel, uh, one after another. Uh, yeah, it, it, it depends whether it's going to take more or less space. Uh, some some systems they prefer, and in terms of hardware too. Some hardware devices, they are designed to handle interleaved images. The others, they prefer planner because they may provide certain functionalities in which leaving out one channel at a time. Uh, if, if, for example, you want to view the images, just turn off the green in very quickly in hardware, uh, representing the image in a planner way may, may be more efficient for certain functions. It really depends on what kind of display functionality you're looking for. And I think in most TV sets, uh, the representation of the images are in the inter interleaved format, but I'm not so sure. Uh, yeah, it's, it really depends on the hardware. So we're going to focus more on this middle part where our computer graphics program is going to be doing the rendering and the, sometimes the rendered output can be directly put into display by your graphics card or you can also uh, output your graphics program's output as an image file and write it on the disk. Uh, when we are playing games, for example, uh, the output is directly uh, put on the hardware, uh, on the display device as we play the game, and, and this is done 25 or 30 or even more frames per second, so it, it, it's done very fast. And if you want to, for example, record your play as a sequence of uh, images, you can do you can write the output directly to some image file. This is sometimes called off-screen rendering. Let me write it here. So off-screen rendering. So writing the contents to a file, not to the screen. That's why it's called off-screen. But uh, yeah, let me quickly open up this one. Uh, we are here. So yeah, this is the image format we are going to be using in your first assignment. Uh, we will, we will not be generating uh, animations. Uh, the computer graphics programs that we will be writing in this course throughout the semester will be generating single frames. Uh, we will not consider animation or changing different things, but uh, we will provide you tools, for example. Sometimes animation is really good. Uh, for, for example, in the ray tracing assignment in the previous years, uh, we have provided like you, you can create a script to create multiple images uh, by changing certain parameters for example by changing the camera orientation around the scene uh, we can generate the same scene uh, from different viewpoints and if you generate a certain number of the, those images like 1000 of them there are tools in Linux to generate those movies automatically from those 1000 images and you can generate movies but uh, our programs uh, this is a wrap around script around our programs that we're going to write most of the cases uh, our programs output will be a single image of a certain static 
a snapshot of the scene and that single image will look like this. So we will be using this uh, format, uh, the PPM format, and this is the ASCII PPM format. There's also a binary, binary PPM format in which the, this information writ is written in binary. In ASCII format, it's good to view what the colors are. You can see, uh, you can read, you can open it in any editor. So it's a very simple format. It's easy to uh, read and write uh, just to ease on program and uh, make programming easier. We are going to be uh, using the PPM format. Portable pixel map. I think that's portable pixel map. Uh, there is you can generate JPEG format images, uh, but you need if you you need the library to do that, or you need to know the JPEG format. This is a binary format, and you need to know how it's created if you want to do it yourself. But uh, this part is a header. Uh, there is a header that tells us that, so this is like a magic uh, number that tells uh, this is a PPM format. And this is like a comment, uh, which, which is probably ignored. Uh, the first line here says that it's a four by four image. So it's an eight pixel image, not eight megapixels. It's just eight pixels, I'm not sorry, not eight, 16. So I could not even multiply four by four. So it's a 16 pixel image. Uh, 4 by 4 so there are 16 pixels here if you count as you can see it's just an array of two, two dimensional array of three no triplets of numbers so I have a gray value here another gray gray so red green and blue red and blue what does it make probably some purple purple looking thing because if you combine red and blue it will give you some purple color uh, another gray green and blue gives you what cyan or turquoise whatever you want to go green and blue some other and we have red blue so this is a, a very simple uh, image of just 16 pixels if you try to view it you just either you have to zoom out or it's going to be a very small image on your screen if you just try to view it uh, so here's some side note here um, ppm format they're not all uh, viewers on your Windows or Linux machine can view can display PPM directly. Uh, one thing that I use for this purpose uh, uh, is a tool called Image Magic. Uh, it it has some command line tools, uh, which can do format conversions between images. So if you, for, for example, have your PPM image, and if you you can easily convert it to a JPEG or PNG. By, by just using Image Magic's Convert command line tool. So if you want to install it, uh, just search for Image Magic with a C and a K at the end. Uh, okay, uh, command line tools, or just if you just install Image Magic. So this is the website for Image Magic. You can it's available for different systems: Mac, Linux, Windows. There are binary re releases. And it comes with, uh, as I said, some command line tools. And you can use it to uh, convert from one format to the other to reduce, for example, the sizes of your images or to view them on regular disk viewers like uh, Windows Paint or Photo Viewer. Okay, so PPM, it's very simple to read and uh, write, but here is something uh, bad about this. Uh, an 18 megapixel image may contain, uh, I mean, may, a single image may require around 200 megabytes of disk space uh, because it's really inefficient, all right? Because it's one byte per channel and three bytes per pixel. We only need three bytes per pixel, but when you write it in ASCII, uh, you have three bytes. Uh, per channel, right? I mean, each character takes one byte here. So let me just annotate. Oops. Okay, each uh, byte here is actually represented in the ASCII format in three bytes. So you're increasing the size. If you just stored it in binary, it will probably be three times less expensive than this. And also, there is the space in between those information. There is space. And uh, different values, for example, a single digit one, is it tab separated or space separated? I'm not sure, but if it's space separated, 
and if you don't uh, if you have these four additional spaces so each of the channel values is going to take three bytes but what you see here in this formula is some strange number uh, 3.57 what is this number so this is the expected value of the uh, bytes required per channel per pixel uh, so therefore uh, how, how is this computed so there are 10 one digit intensities from 0 to 9 this is this is for that 10 you require only one byte for them for values between 0 to 10 and then uh, there are 90 of them from 10 to 99 there are two bit two byte requiring digits uh, yeah this is the, this expected distribution is supposing you there all these any values are you know is equally possible it uh, assumes a uniform distribution of all color channel values you're uh, right and there are three of, but yeah so and this plus one is the additional space between this this is a separator between the values actually the expected value of uh, the required number of bytes per these channel values is going to be 2.57 uh, but this is a, a as I said rough number depending on the distribution of color it may actually be uh, larger or less than this uh, but this just shows you that so 18 megapixels so this is the 18 mega 18 million million a thousand thousand so this is your this is the number of pixels in your image and this is you have three channels red green blue this is the expected byte requirement per channel because since it's ascii and again you divide it by so this is the number of bytes that you're going to be needing right yeah and if you divide it by million you get megabytes so it's it's a very large number you don't want to it's like a movie size right i mean 200 megabytes for a single image it's too much so what we do is we have uh, different uh, we can have used binary ppm to reduce it to 54 megabytes but it's still too much so ppm format is not a very common format because for single images with even their high resolution we use uh, formats like PNG or JPEG uh, to compress those images so image compression techniques are used for example the lossless format is PNG is a lossless image format and there's JPEG which is really common it's a lossy format uh, JPEG actually uh, loses some information of the original image uh, and, but uh, its uh, its main purpose is to make the images as visually lossless as possible uh, so it uses human perception takes in human perception to, into account and transforms those colors into different values so this was our original image the ppm image that 4x4 image this is the original image this is like pur that purplish color between green and red and blue and this is that cyan color uh, so this is the original image in png it will look like this but if you save it as jpeg as you can see it uh, took averages of some surrounding pixels so it transforms the neighborhood into close by values it may, then it becomes easier to compress it has less probably less size than the uh, png in general uh, and depending on how uh, different pieces of your image uh, has same colors similar colors you may get different sizes so the, the interesting thing about both jpeg and png is that um, you cannot predict the image size in terms of the number of uh, bytes it's going to occupy on disk by just looking at its resolution. The, the textures in the image is also important to determine whether it's, uh, for example, if you have a completely black image, even if it's 18 megapixels, it's going to take very small size on the disk. <laughs> yeah yeah if you sc also if you sc squint your eyes i mean this is a 4 by 4 image <laughs> so it's a, we are looking we are seeing really huge pixels here but yeah let me look at look at this one so you can see different qualities so this is actually a very lossy uh, a lossy jpeg image but it looks really like an original image probably the original is not shown here uh, but if you just put the original side by side probably this jpeg image would look very similar to the original one but 
JPEG has different quality settings, probably determining how many neighborhood pixels uh, are going to be averaged. And I think it's uh, uh, it's not just simple averaging. JPEG has some signal processing uh, methodologies behind it. I think it uses a transform called discrete cosine transform or DCT. I, uh, I haven't taken signal processing class. Uh, so, uh, but if I'm not mistaken, it may be using uh, some, some something called cosine transform, discrete cosine transform. And videos are nothing but uh, these sequence of images compressed together. And since uh, individual frames, consecutive frames are going to be very much like similar images to each other, there are different compression techniques that are employ uh, employed in video compression. Video compression is uh, it uses some other techniques, just not just JPEG compression. So individual frames are also compressed uh, with each other uh, by using different techniques. And how do we uh, capture image? We take photographs of real world uh, or uh, so image capture. Uh, when you take a photograph, the real world intensity is captured through the sensors in your photograph in your cam uh, in, in your camera. Uh, the light intensity in the but when we just in in the sensors of the camera those perceived signals are then transferred into again integers if you're using this three byte uh, three bytes per pixel uh, space even in the raw format it's just going to be discretized into this and the in the real world the luminance the brightness of the scene is not just limited to these 256 values, right? Uh, sometimes it may be the contrast from the lowest uh, bright value in a scene to the highest bright value in the scene, maybe 10,000 to 1. If the brightness levels between these two objects in your scene is 10,000 to 1, how do you capture that ratio in between just values between uh, 0 and 255, it will, it will not be possible. So this brings us to the area of high dynamic range imaging. And uh, Ozucha uh, does research in this area, high dynamic range imaging. And so, uh, so there's a lot of detailed slides here, uh, but as I said, it's like a slide. I yes. get the point. I uh, oh, the get point. The yeah, point. Uh, you're going to probably get the point if you see the real images here. So. Uh, in real life, when we take a, a real scene with our own eyes, uh, probably our own uh, eyes, our cones, or I mean our photosensitive cells in our retina, uh, have a higher range of uh, brightness values. The brightest we can see and the lowest bright we can see uh, may have, for example, the lowest bright we will see has the luminous value 1 maybe, and the brightest one, if you look at the sun, it's, you, you will not be able to look at it. It will be like 10,000, 100,000 times higher luminance than this. But when you capture that information uh, in, a photo, in, a, in, a, in a camera, uh, what you're basically doing is some of the cells are going to, sensitive cells are going to saturate, but they will not be able to store values larger than 255 per channel, right? You will not be able to, the, the brightest you can get is the brightest white you can uh, model in your image. It will be 255, 255, 255. But uh, that bright white value uh, in real life, uh, the sun's brighter value is actually much brighter than a white piece of paper. So uh, while we are capturing this luminous, we are losing some information. Uh, that's uh, why uh, there are different techniques to remap, for example, the ratio of those brightness values into our images. For example, look at this image, a low exposure image. What it says is that so there, this part you see very dark, it's all black. We cannot distinguish between whether there are how many chairs are there around this table. We don't see, but the, the clouds are, the details on the clouds are really nicely seen. That's the bright part, but we spend our uh, diff luminous differences in a low exposure image, we have this, and this is a high exposure image, in which now we can see some details on the ceiling and on the floor, or it's, uh, the floorboard has certain patterns, which we didn't see before, but now 
uh, what happens is the clouds details on the clouds are gone uh, you can have this part to you can distinguish the differences between colors here but by doing that uh, you're actually saturating all your photosensitive cells for these pixels all the whites are they are all white now you don't see the difference between them so this is the maximum luminance in a scene and the minimum luminance in the scene is called the ratio of these two things so is called the dynamic range and a real scene with our own when we see it in our own eyes can have a 10,000 to 1 or more ratio difference between the lowest brightness and highest brightness and what we when we are we, when we take a photograph we our camera when we when we save it as a JPEG image or a PNG image, if we have three bytes per pixels, we limit this range to 0 to 255. You might argue that oh, 0, 0 to 255 it's, it's infinity, right? 255 divided by 0, uh, you may say it's uh, infinite, uh, but 0 here, does, we don't do it like this. So 0 indicates certain uh, luminance and from 0 to 1 it's like, it's not like um, infinity times larger so th these are 256 different levels think about it like this so the value of zero here is level one the other is the 256 is level 266 so there are 100 256 different levels and you're limited to those in real life and uh, what we usually uh, we in our uh, smartphones in our cameras now there's a you may have heard, I mean, you may have, when you take a picture, and if there's this dynamic range difference is too high between uh, lowest and highest pixels, your camera automatically generates uh, an HDR version of the photograph. And how it's done is the different uh, exposures are taken very quickly. A low exposure and high exposure of the uh, same scene is taken. The two different photographs are taken by your camera actually and different parts of the images may be combined together to uh, generate an image in which details are pre preserved in both sides so this is called HDR image imaging and sometimes uh, but the the HDR version of your camera still it's the, the, the 256 thing is still there, right? I mean, it's not uh, lifting that limitation. You say your HDR image, it's still in uh, the number of levels is still 256. So uh, if you want to retain the original uh, range level, you may need some specialized display devices with more dynamic range. Uh, it's like, Jim, is, yeah. That, yeah. is that a sec second? Yeah, that's a second. So this is 1 over 1000 seconds. So if you just open your camera shutter the shutter if it just so uh, the way the photograph uh, i mean they take they need to take photons into those sensors of the camera so this is one over one thousand seconds is if you just open your camera shutter very quickly and close it you capture small number of photons and only small number of photons are captured in your camera sensors yeah. And uh, it's, it gives, therefore, it's, it gives you these. So probably here, no photons have reached the sensors in this in these areas. Therefore, they are black. And if you Thank just you. you just turn it on one over thirty seconds, lots of photons hit, and you get saturated. The, these parts of the sensor, it's all hit by photons, and it just becomes white all over the place. So you don't get to see the difference. But as I said. Uh, in, in this course, you're not going to do HDR imaging, uh, okay? These are just side notes to s about display devices and image formats. Uh, you don't need to know the details about these things. Uh, there are different ways to visualize HDR images on a uh, specialized display, but they must. There's a thing called tone mapping. First, you get the image, and then you work on it to map those different levels of luminance again back to 256 without trying to lose the details. And there is also hardware that can uh, display HDR images directly, but they are very expensive. Uh, by the way, LDR stands for Low Dynamic Range Image, uh, which is our conventional regular images that we use with one byte per channel. 
if you if you're interested in this area, you may contact Ozoja. Uh, as I said, he's working, he's doing research in this area. Uh, that's probably why um, and we have uh, these detailed information about HDR. And yeah, why does this matter for you? Uh, still knowing these high dynamic range is important because sometimes you may not get the same the effect you want in a computer in a game or in an animation that you want to produce how do you make the the sun flare for example how do you have that effect because it's not going to it, you you're limited to these 256 levels per channel so knowing these high dynamic range concepts may help you to improve uh, your scenes perception by you may use certain techniques, tricks to generate uh, nice uh, looking images. Uh, so while we're doing uh, camera in computer graphics, we are, while we're taking the pictures of virtual scenes, uh, we are doing something similar uh, to real photography. So knowing these details about how the images are captured uh, may, may be uh, important if you're going to go into details uh, detail of details of these things but in, in this course for the rest of summer we are not going to come back to this okay uh, so the generated images can directly be sent to the display oh by the way we are out of time so I'm not going to take your break time so I'm going to stop here we are in slide 36 okay I'm going to stop today's lecture and I'm going to continue from here on Tuesday at 9.40, hopefully in one hour we'll be able to finish both display devices and human uh, vision. Uh, so this is the human visual system. These are I, I plan to finish this one uh, human visual system in the first hour. And I will, uh, I'm eager to start our first algorithm, the, the ray tracing algorithm. And I will probably do that on Tuesday in our second hour. Okay. Uh, I will be happy to answer if you have any uh, questions. I will stop sharing now. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, see you all next week. Have a good weekend. Uh, see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye.